moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter. Just one of many fine programs brought to you each week on NBC. Tomorrow night, there's top comedy entertainment with the Bob Hope Show, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, and Can You Top This with Senator Ford. Bob Hope delivers rapid-fire comedy routines, while Phil Harris and Alice Faye bring both mirth and music. It's a great Friday night lineup of comedy programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both. The Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. Looked like I was going to get much sleep that night. The Prospect Hotel was right in the middle of town, and from my room, I could hear just about everything went on outside. And there wasn't much I could do about the noise either. It was too doggone hot to shut the window. The sun had been down for a couple hours, but there wasn't any breeze, and my room being on the second floor, well, the, the, the heat just seemed to sort of hang there. Whew. Boy. Well. Yeah. Along about 10 o'clock, I finally managed to doze off. I, I wasn't exactly sound asleep, you understand. It was just sort of in between, you might say. What the Sam Hill is... Uh, huh. For a second, I thought maybe I'd dreamt that shot. And then I, I heard somebody come running out of the front door of the hotel and jump on a horse. And by the time I got across the room to the window, whoever it was had ridden out of sight. Well, I pulled on my pants. I headed downstairs. I was the first person to reach the lobby. Sid Tucker, he, he was the fellow who owned the hotel. Sid was standing behind the registration desk, hanging on with both hands. Hey, what happened, Sid? He opened his mouth to give me an answer, but the words just didn't come out. And he started to teeter a little bit from side to side, and then he toppled over. When I got around behind the desk where he was lying, I saw the pink stain across the front of his shirt. It was getting redder every second. Anything wrong here? I thought I heard a shot. Red? Well, it's Sid Tucker. You better get Doc Prince quick. Well, sure, sure. Now, and get the sheriff, too, if you can find him, will you? I managed to carry Sid into the dining room, laid him out on the table. I figured the doc might have to do some probing for that bullet in Sid's belly. And if Sid was in a good hard surface, he'd have a little e easier time handling him. By this time, everybody in the hotel was crowding around seeing what was wrong. Sid was still breathing, but there was a kind of a raspy noise with every breath he took, and the bleeding was worse than ever. Gee whiz, he was bad off, all right, no doubt about that. Well, it was about ten minutes before Doc Prince got there. It seemed a lot longer, of course, but Let me through. it was just about that time. Now, now, just go on back to bed, everybody. Go on now. There's nothing you can do here. You'd just be in my way. Please, go, go on now. You stick around, Rip, if you don't mind. Why? Well, I might need somebody to help hold him down. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, Sid's going to be all right, ain't he, Doc? Well, I haven't even had a chance to examine him yet. Oh, now, come on, folks. Outside, please, outside. I'll let you know what his prospects are as soon as I find out myself. I'm afraid that's not much of a bandage, Doc, but it's the best I could do under the circumstances. Sure, sure, Britt. Hmm. Well, looks like the bullet may have hit a kidney. Now, I told you folks... To... Oh, hello, Sheriff. Howdy, Doc. Britt. Oh, Sam. How is he? Uh, 
Not good, Sam. Not good at all. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's hemorrhaging pretty bad. Mm -hmm. You around when it happened, Britt? No, I heard a shot, and I came downstairs as fast as I could, but he was alone when I got here. (laughs) Stop him. Well, I'm not going to be able to do any digging for that bullet now. It's in too deep. Uh, Listen, it sounds like he's coming, too. Yeah, yeah. Doc, is it all right for me to try and talk to him? Well, I reckon it won't make much difference one way or the other. (laughs) Now, Sid. I got an awful pain in my belly. What? What? Here, now, you just lie there easy, Sid. Don't do no moving around. (laughs) Hurts bad, Doc. Awful bad. Yeah, now, you've been shot, Sid. Shot? You remember anything about it? No, Sheriff. I'm afraid I don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I recollect. Uh, yeah? He, he told me to give him the box. The tin box with the money the folks asked me to keep for him. You know who it was? Your money, Britt. Your cash is in that box. Fifty. No, no. Don't worry yourself about that. <laughs> Did you recognize him, Sid? What? The fellow who shot you. Did you get a look at him? John. John Stringer. Huh? Must have been him. At least ways he sure, sure resembled that fellow on the wanted posters on the wall here. See? He's not going to answer no more questions, Sam. Yeah. You, uh, you think it was Stringer, Sam? Well, could have been. I didn't know he was in these parts, but it's a kind of hold-up murder he's pulled before. Yeah? Guess there's only one way to find out for certain. Let's go, Britt. Why? Pick up his trail if we can. Yeah, but, uh... You'll come with me, won't you? Well, uh, sure, Sam, if you think you need me, but there are plenty of local residents and make up a posse without I'm not money. taking a posse, Britt. Might be morning before I could get one together, and by then his trail would be cold. Stringer rides alone, usually. I reckon the two of us can handle him. Your horse in the stable? Yeah. Well? All right, Sam. I'll get the car and meet you out in front, huh? I'd heard about Johnny Stringer. He'd killed his first man when he was only 14 years old, and they said he'd managed at least one more every year since. He's still young, though, 21, 22 supposed to be a handsome boy with black curly hair and brown eyes and a little scar on the side of his neck from a gunfight somewhere near Salt Lake City. I'd never met up with him in person. As a matter of fact, this was further south and he usually strayed. That is, if it was Stringer who'd killed Sid Tucker. Well, we got our horses, Sam and I, and started looking for the trail. The fellow I'd heard ride off just after the shooting had been heading east toward the Furnace Hill, so we rode out that way. There was a lot of moon, and after milling around 15, 20 minutes, we spotted some fresh tracks along the creek at the edge of town. Of course, we still had no reason to be certain that this was the right trail. Hold on a minute, Sam. Whoa, whoa, Scar, whoa. What's the matter, Britt? Whoa, whoa. Look, I... Over there beside that cactus... What's that look like to you? I don't see any. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy, boy. Easy. That's the tin box Sid was talking about? Yeah. Yeah, the kid must have shot the lock open. Empty, huh? Yeah. Probably got tired carrying it. Mm Mm-hmm. Hotel should have had a safe. Been telling Sid Tucker that for years. Yeah, well, this box always served the same purpose. Up till now. Yeah, yeah, up till now. Sid said he was keeping some of your money for you. Yeah, a couple of months' pay. That's too bad. Oh, well, I'll get over it. Sid won't. Well, uh, no point hanging on to this anymore, I guess. Yeah. At least we know we're on the right track, Chris. Yeah, that's something. All right, Scott, let's go. Well, he had an hour's head start, maybe more. And we had to take it pretty slow to be sure we wouldn't lose the trail. So it didn't seem like we had much chance catching up to him. Not very soon, anyhow. But then just about dawn, when the eastern sky started to show a few slivers of orange and yellow, those 
tracks we were following took on a different look. Britt? Uh-huh. You see now? Something must have happened to his horse. Yeah. Feels like maybe he went lame. Yeah, sure does, doesn't it? You see here, Britt? You see? Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Must have stopped the rest for a spell. Mm-hmm. Come on, boys. Don't seem like it did much good, though. Horse was lamer than ever when they started up again. Uh, he couldn't have been making very much time here on, that's for sure. Yeah. Better keep our eyes open. Might be running into him any minute. We were in the Furnace Mountains now, and the sun was coming up hot. Oh, this is going to be another scorcher, all right. You could feel everything start to warm up already. The trail we were following showed more and more signs of the horses in pretty bad shape. And the, the places where he'd stopped to rest were getting closer and closer together until finally we saw the fellow on the saddle had just given up trying to ride and started moving out ahead on foot. Oh, oh, oh. Easy, easy, Scott. Easy. Might as well leave the horses here, Britt. You can't be much further now. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. Hmm? Hey, uh, over there in the, the cabin on the side of the ravine there. Uh-huh. Know whose it is? No, I ain't never been on this slope before. Well, somebody's living there. Uh, from the looks of that smoke, I'd say they're cooking breakfast. Let's close in. We started up the side of the ravine, moving slow, keeping the rocks for cover. It wasn't until we were about 20 yards away that I noticed the barn sitting in front of a clump of trees across a little clear, and we swung a little to our left. If we could just get over to the barn without anybody seeing us, then we could move into the cabin itself, but we were... we were still in a place, and we, we, we had to get past that clear and first. He... he ain't spotted us, Briss. I guess not. If he's really here... Look at those tracks leading into the barn. Same horse we've been following. I'd stake my life on it. Yeah, yeah, they do look kind of familiar. Best thing we can do now is rush the back door to the cabin. If it's unlocked, we can be inside before he even knows what's happened. If it ain't, well, we'll have to shoot our way in. All right, Sam. You're calling the turn. It was about 30, 40 feet from the barn to the cabin itself. Sam rocked back on his heels and he gave a lunge forward. He was a big man, but he sure couldn't move plenty fast. All I could do to keep up with him. The back door was unlocked, all right, and we charged inside like a couple of Texas steers. Get your hands ah! up. Get them up quick. Mother, the chemist. Well, uh, who are you? Who are you? What are you doing here? Uh, Why'd you break in like this? Uh, well, now, uh, I, uh, we don't mean any trouble, miss. Then why do you come? Uh, well... You think we... to rob me, no? Well, I have nothing to steal. You have picked the wrong cabin, senor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sort of looks like maybe we have. We'll return to James Stewart as the sick shooter in just a moment. Not all careless drivers have accidents, but many such careless drivers cause accidents. A woman driver who drives slowly down Main Street while doing a little window shopping is a menace. So is the man who insists on telling the people in the back seat of his car about his poker game last week. It's no wonder that ordinarily cautious drivers start to lose their tempers and take dangerous chances to pass these careless drivers. When an accident results, the person who caused the accident probably won't even be touched. So the National Safety Council says if you want to window shop, get out and walk. If you are too busy describing one of your sterling feats to pay any attention to traffic, get out and walk. The driver's license you have does not give you the right to endanger the lives of your passengers or other human beings. Driving can be dangerous. Keep your mind on what you're doing or walk. Now, Act Two of The Sick Shooter. Starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. Well, she was a real pretty girl. 
about 20, jet black hair and black eyes that sort of flash sparks when she talked. At least they were flashing sparks at us for a while. But finally we managed to get her quieted down. We explained that we weren't trying to rob her. We were just looking for an outlaw who was somewhere in these parts. No. No. I have seen no one. Uh, you sure about that? See, there has been nobody. Last night, last week, nobody. You live here all alone? <sighs> this cabinet belongs to my father, Alfredo Mendez. He's dead now. Six months. I live alone. Mm, I must be kind of lonely, a young girl like you. I'm busy. I take care of cows. I plant seeds. There will be food for winter. Uh -huh. Well, I think I'll take a look around outside. The barn, maybe. Well, you look there. I tell you, there's no one. Yeah, yeah, that's what you told us. Mm hmm. Want me to go with you, Sam? No, no. You might check the rest of the cabin, though, Britt. Sure. You think I lie? You think I would protect this bandido you tell me about? I am Maria Gonzalez Mendez. I do not lie. All right, all right. Now, don't get excited, Maria. If he should be in this neighborhood and you didn't know about it, well, it'd be for your own good if we turned him up, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? See? See, I guess so. But your friend, he does not trust me. Well, Sam's a sheriff. He can't afford to take chances. Uh, you mind showing me the rest of the place here? If you like. This is the men room. You call it the parlor. Uh-huh. Here is where I sleep. Uh, what's that door over there? The, the bedroom of my father. Oh. Uh, it, uh, it is still as it was when he... It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're satisfied? I'm satisfied Stringer isn't in the cabin, Maria. Mm. You're like your friend. You do not trust me either. Why would I hide this man if he's what you say he is? I sure don't know. He killed someone last night? That's right. You did not see him do it. Mm -hmm. No, but the man he shot, well, he recognized Stringer. Stringer? <laughs> it is a funny name. Yeah. I never heard of him. Well, he's pretty well known. This isn't his only killing by a whole lot. Hmm. It has nothing to do with me. Well, he's not in here, Sam. Yeah. Well, he's not in the barn either. But his horse is. What? No, Senor, no. It is my horse, the one you saw. I suppose you've been riding him all night, huh? I do not know what you mean. Well, somebody's sure been giving him a workout. They even rode him after he went lame, too. Now, why don't you start telling us the truth for a change? How about it? It does no matter. He has gone. I get to him another pony and he rides away. Long before you get here, he is gone. Well, now I'll be... You will never catch him now. That is why I pretend I think you want to rob me when you come. Eh, uh, mine are known. But he has killed no one. And his name, it is no Stringer. It is Johnny Davis. He tells me that you will look for him and that you will blame him for things he does not do. Sure, that's what he told you. And you had to believe him, didn't you? He would not lie to me. Uh, well, I guess you ain't the first senorita who got taken in by Johnny Stringer. Even his wife. He's talked her into putting up with him on and off for the last five years, and she's supposed to be a pretty decent girl. He's... His wife? That's right, Maria. Johnny's married. Has been since he was, all oh, 18 or so. It is not my concern, this Johnny Stringer. It isn't, huh? Your friend Davis, has he got black hair, curly black hair? Many men have black hair. Mm-hmm. And many men don't have a scar on their neck right here. A scar? We're just wasting time, Britt. We've got a trail to pick up. Yeah, yeah. Wait. You lied to me about this scar. You tried to make me think that my Juanito is the same man you look for. You lie about him. I told you the truth, Maria. But, but he could not be married. No, it is not so. He's promised to marry me. How long has Stringer been staying here? No, Stringer. He's not Stringer. His name is Davis. Johnny Davis. How long has he been here? Two weeks. He stays in my father's room two weeks. I find him with a bullet in his leg. He's hurt. I make him well. He says he loves me. Yeah. He goes yesterday to arrange for the wedding. Mm -hmm. He couldn't marry you, Maria. If he did, it wouldn't be a real marriage. No, senor. No, he says he loves me. He says I feel it in my heart. If he does not have love for me, I would know. Rich. Yeah? 
He's got a fresh horse. We'd better get moving. Yeah, sure. Come on. He, he has no horse, senors. What? The man with his car, he has no horse. Where is he, Maria? You try to fool me that he's married, that he has a wife. You make this up to fool me. Where is he? The barn. But I already... The loft of the barn, that's where he hides, the loft. Now I have told you the truth. You must... Yeah? You, you must tell me the truth about John. There's no reason to fool me any longer. You must tell me the truth. But it is the truth, Maria. All of it. And I'm sorry. <laughs> you ready, Britt? Yeah, 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 I'm ready. We walked outside. We didn't draw our guns. We just strolled along as though we were going to go right past the barn. And when we got even with the door, Sam nodded, and we took a couple of quick steps and pressed flat against the building. Stringer? We know you're in there. Stringer! Sam waited a minute or so, and then we started inching toward the open door. I took my cue from him, and I started moving in the opposite direction. Well, he was up there all right. And he was in a good position to cover that door, too, if either one of us so much as got near it. We ain't no hurry, Stringer. We can wait. You wait a long time, mister. Sam? Yeah? Is there any other way of getting inside, around the back, maybe? There's a window, but it's too small to crawl through. Isn't that he's using up a lot of bullets? Trouble is, we don't know how many loads he's carrying. Yeah. Guess we'll just have to try smoking them out. Ain't no breeze. Ought to be safe enough. What about the horse? He's just inside the door. He ain't tied up or nothing. He'll come out before it gets too bad. Okay. I'll go around and back. I managed to get to the rear of the barn by hugging the sides of the building and keep out of range. Every once in a while, I could hear Stringer get off another shot. But he was still aiming towards Sam, trying to make sure that we didn't rush him. I found some dry brush and pushed it up against the barn. And then I broke through the window with the butt of my gun. And that told Stringer where I was. He sure didn't like it. I, I flattened down and I stayed that way until I got a handful of brush burning. And then I raised up a couple of inches and then threw it inside. I didn't know whether it would catch or not. So I stayed there where I was so, so I could be sure. Yeah, I must have been lucky. It had hit some rags and papers. Anyway, a good steady stream of smoke was pouring out the broken window. And Stringer would have to start moving out pretty soon. He wasn't doing any shooting, so I made my way around the front again. The smoke was starting to come out the door, and the whole inside of the barn was filled up with it. never know about a horse during a fire. Some of them would just stand right in the middle of it and not make a move to save themselves. But there was only one direction Maria's pony could head, and that was outside, so he finally put his nose down the count and galloping past. About a minute later, Stringer followed his example. He was holding a bandana over his mouth with one hand, and the other hand was stuck up in the air. We were both covering him, Sam and me, but it didn't look like we had anything to worry about. And then I saw a flicker of metal behind that bandana. But before I could do anything about it... What is that? What is that? She ran in front of us and threw herself in his arms. I figured you wouldn't let me down, honey. He pulled her tight against him and the bandana fell away from the revolver he was holding. All right, just drop him. I said drop him. Unless you want to shoot her in the back. Johnny. Drop him, I said. And I ain't going to wait much longer. Okay, Stringer. You too, mister. Now, honey, just stay close to me. We're getting out of here. Will you take me, Johnny? What's the difference? You take me to get married like you promised? Remember, Johnny, you promised me this would be our Sure, wedding. sure, I remember, but we got other things to think about now. Where'd they leave their horses, Maria? Did they tell you? I got out my mother's white dress. The dress she was married Yeah, in. yeah. I dress it nice. The lace. I look very pretty, Johnny. Oh, shut up. What about their horses? Why don't you tell her you won't marry her, Stringer? That you can't, even if you wanted to. I wouldn't do a lot of talking if I was you, mister. 
Tell her about your wife in Utah. And some of the other girls have helped you over a tight spot. You're not the first, Maria, not by a long shot. I warned you, mister. I told you... Says, why do you care, Johnny, if they are not true? But they are true. Aren't they, Johnny? I never said they was true. You have to say. I know. In my mother's white dress with the lace. I will not wear it today. What if I am married? That doesn't mean that we can't... Maria. For a second, I didn't realize what had happened. Stringer was staring at Maria like he'd never seen her before, and then he started to raise the revolver he was holding, his finger on the trigger, but he never finished squeezing it. He slid out of Maria's arms and fell face down on the dirt. It was a small knife with a fancy silver handle buried deep in his back right between his shoulder blades. You will want to take me with you now. Not Juanito. But I would like to change my dress first. I... I think I would like to wear the white one with the lace. After all. Well, we waited around till we sure the fire was out, and then we took Maria back to Prospect. I don't know whether what she'd done was murder or not. I Stringer was holding a gun on us. Maybe she saved her lives. And he sure had it coming to him. There wasn't much doubt about that. I uh, gave Judge Ricker a statement, and then I, I left Prospect. I, I, I guess if there was a trial, Maria must have come out of it all right. At least I hope so. The word research has become pretty familiar to all of us in the last ten years or so. But have you ever stopped to think what research, especially medical research means to you personally. Without research, we would have no penicillin or any of the other wonder drugs. Research is also the most important weapon in the fight against mental illness. And mental illness today afflicts more than 9 million people. Already, research has opened up leads for preventing many mental illnesses, and research has shown us speedier and more effective ways of helping mentally sick people to get well. Research scientists say we can be hopeful, but they need help from us. They need money to carry on research. If we help science, science can give us a much better chance to escape mental illness and to cure mental illness if it should strike. If you'd like to help, give to the Mental Health Fund in care of your local postmaster. Just address Mental Health Fund in care of your local postmaster. Don't wait. This worthwhile cause needs your support now. Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Harley Bear, Joel Cranston, and Barney Phillips. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlum. And the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Well, by the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the sick shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. Here an address by President Eisenhower next on the NBC Radio Network.